Hello students, this is video part 2 for particle size analysis. Myself, Janet, let us begin understanding some more technicalities of this chapter. In previous video lecture, we have understood the basic idea of CGS, FGS as well as how to test them. In the testing, we understood sieve analysis as well as uh, size distribution curve or grading curve, right? Now, let us understand uses of grading curve. Where grading curve will, will be used? Why we are finding grading curve? For that, classification of soil is the first purpose. So, you will get to know what are the classifying or classifications of soils. Like, uh, if you are analyzing some soil sample, you will get to know the soil is sandy, it is having more gravels, it is having more clay, like this. Soil stabilization. Now, for soil stabilization, what is the size distribution of soil is very important. If it is a clay soil, you will uh, put some moisture and it will be uh, somewhat stabilized temporarily. If it is cohesion less soil, then no water will work for stabilization. That is how you can decide soil stabilization technique or method. Third purpose is determination of coefficient of permeability. So, when we are discussing permeability, ability to permit the water, if the soil is permitting more water, it will be uh, very much viable to liquefaction or it will be uh, having more moisture content. Same way, uh, you can decide by grading the permeability coefficient. Furthermore, design of drainage filters and pavements. For design of drainage filters, when you are talking about drainage filter, when drainage is going to pass, the filters should be transparent and then it can pass. For that design, you need to understand gradation of the curve or gradation of the soil sample. And for design of pavement also, you need to understand the soil in the base of the pavement, right? So, these are the uses of uh, grading curve. Moving forward to CC and CU, two basic main things from uh, particle size distribution curve. First is coefficient of uniformity, CU. Let us discuss CU. CU is defined as ratio of D60 to D10. You know D60 is what? D60 is the size uh, from that the particle sizes will be finer than this only. Uh, there will be a 60 percentage. And if D10 is there, from that we can see from the graph that all the particle sizes will be finer uh, than this and it will be in percentage 10 percentage. Now, if Cu is a ratio of D60 to D10 is coming less than 5, the type of soil will be uniformly graded soil. If Cu is in between 5 to 10, it will be a medium graded soil and if Cu is greater than 15, it will be a well graded soil. So, after deciding sand, silt, gravel, etc., you will get to know if it is uniformly graded, well graded or medium graded soil with Cu. That is coefficient of uniformity. Uniformity means uniformness, right? Coefficient of curvature, CC, is defined as D30 square upon D10 into D60. You know D10, D30 and D60 very well now from previous lecture also. Now, if CC comes around 1 or about 1, it is uniformly graded soil. And if CC is in the range of 1 to 3, it will be a well graded soil. So, that is how you can say CC and CU works. Now, let us discuss sedimentation or wet analysis. So, sedimentation analysis or wet analysis is generally used for fine grain soils, right? We have discussed that in the previous lecture. Now, for that, very basic principle is Stokes law. Stokes has defined some things like this. Larger particles settle first and then smaller particles will settle. If you uh, see settlement of particles, 
the larger size of particles will settle first because of its mass and the smaller particles will settle after that. This is the Stokes law. In other words, we can say that the velocity at which grains settle out of suspension is dependent upon the size, shape and the weight of the grains. So, it is dependent on size, shape and weight of the grains, right? It will depend on these variables. This is uh, the law given by Stoke. Upon that, the uh, hydrometer method or wet analysis will work. Now, let us understand assumptions and limitations of Stokes law. Here, assumptions of Stokes law will be the limitations of Stokes law. Let us understand them one by one. Larger particles settle first and then so smaller particles will settle. This is the first assumption. From that, we can say that the shape of soil particles must be spherical. Otherwise, it will not work. Because if it is a triangular or rectangular shaped particles, they will behave differently. Applicable for particle size having size 0.2 mm to 0.2 micron. So, it is only applicable for these sizes 0.2 mm to 0.2 micron. In other sizes, Stokes law is not valid in all cases. Average specific gravity is considered. Here, if different particles are considered, then all are having average specific gravity is considered in the Stokes law. But it is not possible that in every soil particle, it is the same specific gravity. One more limitation is that accumulation of soil particles happens in this. Now, accumulation means uh, when more amount of soil particles gather, it will form a flow. We can say flow formulation is getting there. It is also a limitation of this Stokes law. For this, we need to use deflocculating agent. Deflocculating agent that will uh, uh, remove the flocks or it will uh, prevent it from uh, having flocks because if there are flocks or flock formulation is there, the soil particles will settle uh, lately or it will settle uh, after some time. So, Stokes law will be not valid there. So, for deflocculating agents, we will use generally sodium hexametaphosphate. It is used for deflocculating agents in Stokes law or sedimentation analysis. You need to remember this. Moving forward, correction to hydrometers. Now, hydrometer method will be used for sedimentation analysis. Now, hydrometer method uh, has some corrections. Let us discuss these corrections. First correction is meniscus correction. Meniscus correction is uh, written by C and in suffix M, CM. Meniscus correction is always positive correction. Another correction is temperature correction that is known as CT. Temperature correction will be dependent on temperature. If your temperature at that time is greater than 27 degrees, it will be a positive correction. If the temperature is lesser than 27 degrees, then it will be a negative correction. Same way, third correction that is dispersing agent correction because we are using some agents in the uh, water and uh, soil, it is to be added or removed. Here, dispersing agent correction is CD. CD is always negative, so we have to remove that from the values got by hydrometer method. So, these are the corrections. Let us discuss one problem. Classify the given soil sample. So, from test, some soil sample is given. Here, N percentage and fines are provided. N percentage, that is percentage passing. Now, 10 percentage, 20 percent, 30 percent, 60 percent, 90 percent and 100 percent are provided. Fines or we can say F in mm. So, sizes of the soil are given 1.28 mm, 2.98 mm, 3.07 mm, 4.80 mm, 4.92 mm and 5.25 mm. 
So these are the sizes and these are the percentages passing years. Let us write solution of this by writing given data. Here furthermore three things are given in the problem only. This is G. 20 percentage S 78 percentage and F there is 2 percentage. Now G S and F are what? G is gravel, S is sand and F is fines. So gravels are 20 percentage, S sand are 78 percentage. So we can understand these soils will be sandy soil because of the sizes or percentage that is 78 percent of the soil is sandy soil. So it will be a sandy soil. Now we will do what given soil is sandy soil and it is a CGS coarse grain soil right. Now we will write D10, D30 and D60 values because D10, D30 and D60 values are most important values for us. As we have discussed CU and CC coefficient of uniformity and CC is coefficient of curvature. Both will be helpful to find out and classify the soil sample. Now. D10 comes out as 1.28 from the table, D30 comes out as 3.07 from the table and D60 comes out as 4.8 from the table. So all the values are not useful, three values are most important for us, D10, D30 and D60. Now we will find out CU by doing D60 by D10. Now D60 is 4.8, D10 is 1.28. So putting both the values, I am getting CU as 3.75. CU and CC both are unitless. Do remember that. CU and CC both are unitless. Now CU comes out as 3.75. And if I find out CC from the formula D30 square upon D10 into D60. Putting D30 as 3.07. D10 as 1.28 and D60 as 4.8. I am getting CC value as 1.53. Now, I have to remember CU and CC table. What are the ranges of CU and CC? That will decide its gradation. So, if I uh, recall CU, CU is 3.75, means it is uniformly graded as sand. And CC is 1.53 means it is well graded sand. Now if I check CU table it is 3.75 right? Then if I go back and I, if I see table of CU then CU is 3.75 which is less than 5 then it will be a uniformly graded soil. And for CC it will be uniformly for CC it will be the value as CC is 1.53 it is ranges between 1 to 3 it will be a well graded sand both are sand it is uh, uh, predefined but one is uniformly graded according to CU and according to CC it is well graded so that is how you can calculate numericals of this chapter that's it in this particle size analysis chapter we will begin a new chapter in the next video thank you